So it has been quite a while since I actually updated the 1 to 8 scale Mustang build from Agora Models. This build is not really a conventional magazine style build as you'd usually just simply screw or glue all of the parts together and in the end have a finished piece. I decided to take it a different route. I wanted to change the interior color and also change the exterior color. With this model being 1 to 8 scale, it is pretty simply put massive and therefore the undertaking of actually changing a lot of the colors for some of these parts is also not a small task. So in the first episode I built pretty much the entire interior, stripped or repainted all of the parts that I wanted to repaint which is about 70% of the parts in the interior to a tan brown and also a combination with a matte black just to tone it down a little bit. In the second episode, I tackled all of the chassis and uh, suspension components plus some of the engine bits. And when that all was finished, I decided to move my shop from my bedroom to an actual uh, bigger location where I had some extra space. And therefore, it took a couple of months to actually get started on this. And also I tried to postpone it a little bit as I was kind of scared of the enormous task it would be to repaint this massive body. Now, nonetheless, now you're up to speed. I started stripping all of the paint off of the uh, original body, which was a super nice white with a blue stripe. But simply with the interior color that I decided on, it didn't really fit in with the style anymore. So I had to go all the way, as you can see right here, strip off all of the paint from the exterior with some Rust-Oleum paint stripper. Uh, that took quite a while as the paint stripper took out most of the paint the first time round but not all of it and all the stubborn paint that was still left on the body took quite a while to actually strip off. So uh, therefore it took a little longer than expected and also took a bit more work. Now specifically, not only the body was stripped, of course, all of the other parts that were painted white needs to be stripped down as well. And there were quite a few of them. Once all of the paint had been stripped off, I could move on to prepping the metal for primer. I simply just washed it off with some water and then sanded it down with a 400 grit sanding sponge. I could then clean it off again with a wet paper towel to remove all of the uh, metal shavings that are left on there and generally just clean it up a little bit. Once it then had dried and was moisture free, I moved it into the spray booth, simply just put it on top of a box as I didn't really have anything else that would fit and hold the body on itself as it is pretty heavy and could then move on to applying the first coat of primer. For primer, I'm using Tamiya's uh, primer. This is a gray filler primer suitable for metal, plastic, and also resin. And I really, really love the way that this stuff lays down. It sprays on really smooth, pretty quickly covers the areas and also dries really fast. So after covering the first side, I then moved on to applying the primer to the roof and had to turn the model around in the spray booth to do pretty much the same thing on the other side as well. The body was pretty smooth after the first sanding session and with the primer now on it, it still is nice and smooth and didn't really show all that many imperfections. There were still a couple of rougher sanding scratches in there from the 400 grit, but nothing out of the ordinary. So I simply just decided to sand it down with a 600 grit to refine those rougher scratches from the earlier sanding session, smooth out a couple of dust spots that might have been in there and generally just smooth over the entire primer. Uh, for it to be very nice and smooth for the paint to lay on top of. But before you want to do that, the 600 grit is still a bit of a rougher scratch for paint to lay on top of, so I decided to go over it again with another good coat of primer. So just like the first application of primer, the second one goes down exactly the same. I'm not going to go for a super thick coverage, just making it nice and smooth and make sure that all the bare metal spots have been covered and all the areas that have some uh, rougher sanding scratches are fully filled up as well to make it a nice smooth finish. So after applying this second coat of primer, you could just uh, let it sit and dry for about half an hour 
and then sand it again with a 3000 grit to make it even smoother but I decided just to leave it as is because the primer had cured up really nicely and left a super smooth finish. For the exterior color I decided to go with street blisters. They wanted to work with me on this one. I found a color that I wanted to use on it and it is actually a Ferrari color. It is a dark metallic green with a super nice metallic uh, fleck in it and a overall nice dark deep green. I decided to go with this color as I kind of got inspiration from the Bullet Mustang but I simply just like green a lot as well so it is a bit of a combination of those two and also it suits really well with the interior color that I decided to go with for that uh, brown tone. So first off I actually decided to paint the inside of a lot of the pieces. Since this is a pretty big model a lot of the parts will be visible from various different angles and I wanted to be sure that everything was fully covered and painted up. So all of the insides of the fenders, the doors and all of the uh, shuts and returns were done first. I let that sit and cure for a couple of days and then moved on to the outside pieces. So just for a bit of a timeline, the entire paint job took place over a couple of weeks. In total, I think it took about a month with a lot of time in between all of the pieces as various stages of paint needed to cure first before I could move on to the next one. Now for the body, I decided just to put my hand in front of the camera so you couldn't see anything I was doing in the beginning. Quickly found out that that wasn't really working so then moved uh, my hand out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing. So for the exterior or the main body itself, I decided just uh, like all the other pieces to paint the shuts and returns or the inside pieces, uh, which will be a lot harder to cover later first and make sure that everything was covered with a couple of coats of paint and didn't have any primer showing through anymore and could then move on to the bigger areas like the rear quarter panel and also the roof and of course the rest of the body as well. With the first side completed, the body was turned around and I moved on to the other side. So just a quick safety or uh, precautionary thing I want to mention, I'm applying the paint pretty thick and heavy here. The body on this one is made out of metal as you could see earlier and therefore it doesn't really react to the paint all that much. However, if this were to be a plastic model, be careful and don't apply paint this wet. These paints that I'm using here are automotive paints bottled down and also uh, some of the metallic flakes scaled down a little bit, but they are based on uh, some lacquer thinners and can be pretty aggressive when it comes to plastics. So don't apply the paint this heavy on plastic models. Just take a couple of layers, build it up slowly and don't go for full coverage first time. Now with this specific color, it is covering nice and quick and it took about two coats to achieve full coverage. I decided to go for a third coat as well, just to be sure that I didn't miss any spots and everything was nice and even. Once that was completed, I waited about 30 to 45 minutes and then mixed up the 2K clear from Street Blisters as well and started applying a couple nice and heavy coats of clear to make it super nice and glossy. Again, first of all, just focusing on those shuts and returns and making sure that those are covered and I didn't miss anything and then pointing my attention to all of the rest of the parts like the quarter panels, the roof and the other side. After applying the first coat of clear, I let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes to flash off and then moved on to applying a second and final coat of clear, achieving the final glossy finish. With all of the insides of the pieces now painted and also the main body taken care of, I could put my attention to the rest of the pieces like the doors, the fenders, the hood, uh, the trunk and also the front and rear portions of the body. I'm not really going to call them bumpers as the bumpers on these older cars were extra chrome pieces. So just let's call it the front and rear end. These were all taken care of in pretty much exactly the same way the rest of the parts were. I first of course stripped off the paint, painted the inside, 
and then moved on to the outside, sanding them down with a 400 grit, applying some primer pretty heavily, smoothing that out with a 600 grit, and then applying another coat of primer to make it nice and smooth. Now with some of the pieces, there might be a little bit of dust in them, and you can just sand those out with a two or 3000 grit sandpaper and move on to the paint. So after sanding it again with a 600 grit and applying another coat of primer, I was really happy with the finish on all of the parts and could move on to applying the color. This again, just like the main body, was done in multiple stages and in three coats to make sure that everything matched nicely. It was painted with the exact same batch of paint that I used on the exterior, the same bottle, same mixture, so I didn't have any difference in color. The first coat on the trunk has now been applied, so that could be set aside to cure, and in the meantime I simply just moved on to the next panel, and in this case that is the door. With this round of parts now cured for the first coat of paint, I could move on to applying the second coat. There was about 5 to 10 minutes dry time in between all of these parts and coats, so that is more than enough for the second coat to be applied on top of it with the paints that I'm using here. Now again, I want to make sure that everything is nice and clear for you guys so you fully understand. These parts are made out of metal and I'm applying the paint very, very heavy on this one. If this were to be a plastic body, please do not apply the paint this heavy as that will ruin your piece if you are using lacquer paints. So the first, second and third coat of color have been applied. Everything is fully covered and I can move on to applying the clear. Now, since this one is an in and outside piece and some of the inside pieces are still visible after the door panels for the interior have been put on, I'm also applying a nice coat of clear on some of the edges here, which will still remain visible if you open the doors. So those are covered first, then the main edges around the panel are covered lightly as well. And of course, then the main panel itself will be covered in a couple coats of clear to make it nice, smooth and glossy. With the first coat of clear on the door now applied, just like earlier, I'm moving on to a next piece while the door is curing and applying some clear on those parts too, and then getting back to the door for the second and probably final coat of clear to finish it all off. So this batch of parts now has had its first coat of clear and I'm back to the door again for the second and final coat of clear. This one is a bit heavier to achieve a nice glossy finish so it can flow out nicely and remove pretty much all of the orange peel in there and leave a super glossy finish. With all of the humongous metal pieces now completed and clear coated, I could move my attention to a couple smaller plastic pieces for some of the rear parts and also some of the air vents and scoops all over. They were actually made out of plastic and not metal, so they were treated a little bit differently, but in the general sense of things, it is pretty much the same. Instead of stripping it with the paint stripper, I simply just sanded over it with a 600 grit to make it all nice and smooth. Applied primer, sanded again with 600 grit, applied more primer, made sure that everything was nice and even and no imperfections were in there and could then apply a couple coats of the green to finish it all off after, of course, applying the clear coat and letting it cure for a while. So just to give you a bit of a behind the scenes, all of the parts were scattered around my entire workshop for a matter of weeks. 
Some were painted at the same time, but in total I think it was about three to four batches before I got everything nicely painted and that was spaced out in a time scale of about a month. In the end, there was just a little bit of paint left uh, that I ordered from Street Blisters and it was barely enough to cover everything, but luckily all of the parts have been painted, fully finished, and are now left to cure for a while before I can move on to the final assembly and probably also some extra little detailed bits on there too. Also for everyone wondering why I didn't paint the stripes on, I was really seriously debating with myself if I wanted to have stripes on it, just the stripes on the side, maybe the stripes on the hood, the roof and the trunk too, or which configuration I wanted to go for. After painting all of the parts in their green color, I really liked the clean look of it, but I might change my mind, but for now the parts are finished and I can always add a stripe later on, but that is just a little hint for the next video in which I will probably be tackling that too, but you'll just have to wait for that. 